Well, hey everybody, welcome to another Blu-ray haul. This one's gonna be a big one. This is technically not the end of January. However, I'm gonna save up a little bit more money for the next couple weeks until February hits. But I have quite a few things to show you. There's some really awesome picks in here, some things from 2018, some uh, things that I've just recently picked up as well, just blind buys and some really exciting things to talk about. So let's just jump right into it. So the first thing that I picked up, well, the first thing on this pile of movies, is Robert Redford in The Old Man and the Gun. Now this is starring Robert Redford, as I said. We also have Casey Affleck, and we also have Sissy uh, Spacek in here as well, and also Tom Waits, and a few other people. This is directed by David Lowry, who is one of my favorite directors. I've talked about him in the, in the past quite a few times. I have a ghost story poster over there in the corner. I love Pete's Dragon, Ain't the Body Saints. Uh, there's quite a few things that I, I like about this director, and I really loved um, this kind of old um, rendition of just a, a heist movie, and it's kind of a send-off for Robert Redford. And that's what I think is really, really interesting. We'll see if Rob Redford actually finishes his career off with this movie. However, it felt like a very, very nice film for him to do uh, and it, like a nice send-off movie for him because it's just, it was just really heartfelt. It was, it, he's a criminal, so more or less the, the kind of the little bit of the plot of the story without really giving anything away. Rob Redford is a bank robber and he just loves robbing banks with his with his buddies. So it's like a cat and mouse game with Casey Affleck and it's just a really really fun uh, heist movie that just he's constantly robbing banks and you know is on the run as well and it's just really heartfelt too because it, you know you just kind of feel for this old man you feel for Robert Redford's character quite a bit anyway that's the first thing that I picked up from 2018. Uh, the second thing that I actually just watched today for the first time is Leave No Trace. So this is starring Ben Foster, and then we also have this woman that I don't know, this new timer, Thomasin uh, McKenzie. And what I really, really loved about this movie is, it, well, one, it's PG, so it, it kind of threw me for a loop. I've heard so many good things about this movie. It's just about uh, this father and his daughter living out in this national park, and they more or less, in the very beginning, kind of get discovered by uh, park officials and relocate them to society and it's just it's it plays on a lot of what Ben Foster's character went through with with a trauma we don't exactly know what it is they don't really spell it out in the movie and his daughter is paying the price of what he wants to do to be independent from society and it's just a really interesting movie and I really loved uh, the performances and I just I loved uh, a lot of the cinematography and just a lot of the set design as well and the story itself is just something that is you know to go home about so leave no trace is a, a fantastic movie that i it takes it took me a while to get to this movie so i'm really happy i finally did check it out if you haven't go watch this movie all right another 2018 movie that i saw last year was a little film that only really was released here for a second and that is monsters and men i loved this movie and i loved the way this movie was told too because it's divided between three different types of characters. So we have John David Washington, we have uh, Anthony Ramos and Kelvin Harrison Jr. here. John David Washington, you know from Black Klansman and several other films, uh, but most notably Black Klansman. This movie kind of was under the radar for a lot of people and honestly, I was just floored by the different perspectives of African American community, especially black community in America. And um, uh, one of them, you know, John David Washington playing a cop, that's, he's, he's in the second story. And it was just unconventional how this story was told. And it focuses on each three of these characters and they have different storylines. One of them, uh, like I said, John David Washington, he's a cop. One of them is a newly uh, made father who's just working, you know, his, his butt off. Uh, is trying to uh, find a job and support his family and the other one is a prospective uh, baseball player and is really wrestling with uh, the, the culture of possibly you know protesting the racial injustices of uh, American society so it, it just it jumps around a lot and it just it is really interesting and it has multiple perspectives of a lot of different things and it's all centered around um, you know this town and I just thought it was just phenomenal. I definitely highly recommend you checking out Monsters in and I believe it's Chicago, by the way, uh, of the, the community. I can't tell you exactly where, but anyway, that's what it reminded me of. Check this movie out if you haven't seen it. It's one of the better movies of 2018. Absolutely uh, amazing performances and amazing storytelling and very unconventional. Uh, so, last movie of 2018. Nope, I lied, two more. 
one of them that I have seen, and that is Jonah Hill's Mid-90s. I loved this movie. I think I talked about it a little bit. I really just loved the performances by all of the kids involved in this movie. It's a skateboarding movie about the 90s, and you have so many uh, just fantastic soundtrack and tracks on this from Wu-Tang to Morrissey. There's just so many things uh, right about this movie, and it's just the, the awful, um, and also kind of just, um, you just, you just get a really big feel for Southern LA in, in the 1990s and that skateboard culture that I remember, you know, having, uh, parts of this throughout my life. Cause I, I obviously played Tony Hawk's pro skater and I had friends who listened to punk music and, and some, some hip hop as well. But like, it was just really interesting capturing this time period in a very realistic sense with the dialogue that all kids in the 90s said, you know, just awful stuff to each other, but like at the same time, really innocent as well. But, you know, it's one of those kind of transitory where you like, you know, are a kid to an adult. It's one of those in-between moments that you don't exactly know where you fit in the world. And that's what this movie is really all about. And Stevie, who is just his character, is just phenomenal and is just really compelling because he reminds me of myself as a kid just trying to be friends with you know older kids and honestly just trying to do the things that they want to do you know and just to be cool and that's kind of what this story is a little bit about and it's just a you know a moment of this kid's life and that's what's so cool about it so check out mid 90s if you haven't jonah hill this is the first time he's directed a movie and it's absolutely worth it it's definitely worth your watch all right, the last movie of 2018, I swear. I haven't seen this one yet, though, so I really don't know much about it, but We the Animals. So I'm going to read a little bit about, about it on the back, but I've heard really great things about this. This movie caught my eye, actually, when I was looking at uh, DVD and Blu-ray releases, and this one caught my eye because of the scores and just the high marks it's gotten. So it's three brothers tear their way through uh, rural, uh, childhood in rural, rural New York and push against their parents' volatile love. With Manny and Joel growing two versions of loving yet unpredictable father, Ma seeks to keep his keep her youngest Jonah in the cocoon of innocence. So I won't read much more about it because I don't really want to read to you, but it just seemed really seemed interesting. So I really don't know much about it, but I can't wait to watch this movie. It looks beautiful and it, it's it's got high marks, so I'm really willing to check this movie out. So now we're moving to some films that I've had on my radar for a while, but I haven't picked up yet. The first one is Victoria, and this movie is really interesting. I I've only heard the, the major thing about this movie is it's a one-shot movie. The whole entire movie is one whole night is one shot. And that's what's so uh, ama amazing about this movie uh, is it will, um, I hope, I haven't seen it yet by the way, I hope to be really kind of blown away by just the, the type of exploratory nature of how filmmaking is made and in this particular movie. Now, there might be some dull moments. I haven't seen it yet, obviously, but I'm really looking forward to this movie just based on the, the premise alone. And so I really don't know much about it, but I'm really excited to see it. So check out Victoria if you haven't seen it, and let me know what your thoughts down below if you have seen it. All right, now we're moving on to some foreign films. The first one is Ida, or Ida. This is director of the new movie that I have not seen yet because it hasn't come around here, Cold War. Um, I'm going to butcher this, it's a Polish director, Paweł Pawlowski, um, but this is a black and white film that I have not seen yet, and I actually have had this on my list until I kind of heard about Cold War, and, and I wanted to know more about the discography because I watched the trailer for Cold War and I was really excited for it, and I've seen the trailer for this movie too, and so it just, it is just, it looks really phenomenal, and it looks extremely shot well, and, and all those things, and actually there is a, a movie that is like a sister to this movie that I actually got together. And I have it right here as well. It's another movie from Poland, The Innocents. And this is actually um, directed by Anne Fontaine, uh, director of Coco Before Chanel. So I have not seen that at all. But this, I think these are like kind of sister movies in my way because I think both of them deal with uh, religion and, and these two uh, strong female uh, protagonists in it uh, especially and I really don't know much about this movie either and yes it's it's different from The Innocence from uh, the 1961 very different but I, I've had this on my list for over two years now I actually had both Innocence on it and so this is the only one that I have not seen uh, these two right here but I this one is about World War II and then this is the middle of the Cold War uh, in Poland in 1962, it looks like. And so these are two um, very amazing time periods 
I wouldn't say amazing, that's probably the wrong word to describe this. I would say two volatile um, time, time periods for uh, Eastern, you know, just Eastern Europe, and especially Poland uh, being the brunt end of, you know, Germany and, and Russia, especially in this film, probably. And, and, and this, you know, you have the satellite states, uh, Poland being one of them, and so I'm sure this delves into a lot deeper things than just religion. I bet it delves into politics, but I'm really excited to watch both of these films. Uh, I can't wait for like a rainy day to just watch both of them. I honestly want to double feature them. So, those are my other two films. Now we're going to move on a little uh, to a, an older film. Uh, a movie I have not seen because I'm actually still collecting a lot of his films, and that's Alfred Hitchcock's The Paradigm Case. Now this is a really awesome uh, release by Kino Lorber. And this I always love about these these films is that it has a different cover on both sides. So as you can see, I love that cover, and I love that cover. Honestly, I'm switching between the two. Um, this is the the cover that you know shows you, but I always love that because it has like the movie poster and you know another alternative movie poster. This came out in 1947, and it's starring Gregory Peck and Todd, uh, Charles Lawton, Charles Coburn, Ethan. Uh, Ethel Barrymore and Alita Valley. So that is a stacked cast. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to this film. It's one of the, the Hitchcock movies I haven't really known much about, so I honestly cannot wait to see this film. All right, moving on. I actually talked a little bit about this for a brief second on uh, my last selection series in my Criterion Closet Picks with Joey, and that is Plague Dogs. Now this is from the same studio that brought you Watership Down. And, and just like Watership Down, both of these films, and I have not seen this yet, I've been, by the way, I'll get it on a side note real quick, I've had this pre-ordered for six months now, and I've had it in my cart for, t I think, almost two years, because it, when, whenever it got announced, I immediately wanted to put it on my cart. It was currently unavailable until, you know, six months ago, and then I was available, like, the pre-release date. So it came out a couple weeks ago, and I'm really excited to check this out. Um, it's a shot select um series and just but well going back to Watership Down sorry I'm jumping all over the place but I'm just excited I really love the dark and, and deep themes of both of these films um, I, I know a little bit about this but I, I know that it's going to uh, have moments of you know pure joy and pure sadness and, and it both in Watership Down and Plague Dogs. And so I'm really looking forward to this movie. I've heard uh, amazing, excellent things about this film. And, and it's just one of those animated films that I've been really looking forward to checking out. So, um, next on this list is actually another foreign film. I think it, it won some awards a couple years ago, and I've had it on my radar for, for a while, but I haven't seen it. And that is The Handmaiden. And this is directed um, by the director of Old Boy, the original Old Boy. And I'm going to bark, I'm just going to butcher the name. Park Shan Wok. Um, so I've heard really, really great things about this movie. I've heard it's a really hard movie to digest, and it's really brutal, just like Old Boy, uh, in a different way. Uh, I heard it's very sexual. I heard it's uh, very dramatized and and violent as well. And I, I'm really looking forward to checking out this film. So the 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 theme of this Blu-ray haul is, and most of my Blu-ray hauls is, I don't watch the movies before I. I buy them, but I, I've heard really great things about this movie, so I cannot wait to see this because I love, um, you know, the works of, of Park and uh, what he's done. So I'll check that film out. All right, now I'm going to have to put some things down because I'm getting piles of stuff. Boop. <laughs> All right, next film on my list is a Sam Elliott film that I've been having on my radar for a long time. That's The Hero. And I've always seen the trailer for this and I've always been interested, but I never, you know, pulled the trigger and finally bought it. And so I finally did, and I'm really excited to check this movie out. But uh, this is a an old Western actor kind of just finding his way, and I, I know a little bit about it based on the trailer, but it looks really interesting and intriguing because it kind of looks like a character dive and a character study of Sam Elliott himself and his own career. And so obviously this is a fictional story. But it feels like it mirrors a lot of the things he's done in his life. And with this just amazing performance in A Star is Born, I, I just, I love this man. And honestly, I cannot wait to check out more films with Sam Elliott in it. And this is one of the quintessential ones that I've heard to, you know, watch. So I can't wait to check out The Hero. He's one of my heroes, so 
All right, next is a kind of on the similar vein to Sam Elliott in a Western sense. I actually picked up this really nice collection right here, the Clint Eastwood uh, Universal Pictures 7 movie collection. So I'm going to read off all the titles it has in it. It has Two Mules for Sister Sarah, it has Joe Kidd, High Plains Drifter, Coogan's Bluff, The Beguiled, Play Misty for Me, and The Iger Sanction. And so this, I know it has a few westerns in this and a few dramatized films by Clint Eastwood. He's, he's you know, starring in these movies. And so I'm really looking forward uh, to this collection. I've heard really great things about several of these movies. And, uh, you know, I need to dive more into Clint Eastwood's filmography and what he's done. I've always seen, um, obviously, his early spaghetti western kind of stuff. And I've also seen his kind of newer Mystic River, Gran Torino, The Mule. I've seen all those films. And those are the ones where he's like, kind of directed and started in as well, a little bit in some of them. But I'm really looking forward to the ones in between and uh, kind of seeing where his career started and how he went all over the place. And so I'm really looking forward to this, the collection I got it for $20 and it was a, a really good deal, so I, I like it. So I'm really looking forward to that. All right, last thing to talk about real quick is this awesome PBS series. And actually I'm gonna be doing this soon. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about Ken Burns, but this is the Roosevelt's. An intimate history. So with this, we have one of my favorite presidents, Teddy Roosevelt, and we also have Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR. And we're, we're talking a little bit about um, the family history uh, and Ken Burns uh, is the narrator. And I'm honestly, what I was saying earlier is I'm really looking forward to diving in all of Ken Burns uh, documentary work. And honestly, I'm gonna start trying to buy those, but they're expensive, they're really expensive, like Vietnam and in the World War II documentaries. And I'm just really looking forward to it. So about this, I really am in love with Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, and I know he's a controversial figure, but also beloved by a lot of people. Um, and I also really enjoy FDR, at least in the historical purposes. Uh, and I'm just really interested in the family dynamics. And I always loved history. I'm a student of history. It was my major before I changed it to communication. And I got my master's degree in that. But anyway, I, I digress. I've always loved history. And uh, I cannot wait to, to dive in deep with these films. And so that is my Blu-ray haul for January. So with that being said, I just picked them all up. This is my Blu-ray haul for January. I got quite a few things and I'm really excited to talk about each one of these possibly in, in the future. Uh, some of them I've seen already before and some of them I cannot wait to, to explore those um, when, it, when the time comes. And so, Thank you very much for checking out this video. I appreciate the watch. Did you see any of the movies uh, that I picked up? Uh, what are your thoughts on them? I want to hear your thoughts down below. Anything I should be keeping an eye on? Give me a like, comment down below. Don't forget to share this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. I'm not Jones and around.